What's up guys, uh, welcome to my channel. This will be my first video on my YouTube channel. Um, so tonight is the post-game show for the Warriors versus the Blazers on New Year's Eve of 2021. First of all, gotta say Happy New Year's everybody. Um, and how about them Blazers? I mean, it's not often that you don't, as a Blazers fan, especially in the last couple of years, you haven't been able to just sit back and enjoy a fourth quarter. Um, I know... Like with the Rockets game a couple days back, uh, that was a pretty tight one. A uh, real, real heart pounder there. And as a Seahawks fan, I'm sure if any of you are Seahawks fans, you'll you'll know how that feels. And so I want to go over a couple things from what I thought. Um, these are just my opinion. If you disagree, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, and I'm a 19-year-old kid, so here we go. My top performers offensively are Damon CJ, obviously. Um, CJ coming right off the bat with four of five from three in the first quarter. That really set the tone, I think. And, I mean, the ISO-heavy offense that the Blazers can run sometimes doesn't work unless they're hitting. Dame and CJ are some of the few backcourts in the league right now that I think that can hit 30, 20, high 20s, low 30s every game. That's what I think. Uh, De CJ really came, set the tone for everybody, and if he can come out and start like that, I know he kind of cooled off in the second half. I think the I think Lamar Heard said that he missed uh, his last seven, but that's okay. I mean, he came out, he set the tone, and luckily in the second half, especially uh, Damian Lillard came up. I mean, I've seen the last couple games. Dame's been kind of rocky. He's not hitting as uh, fans that we've expected him to, but he really showed up in the last couple days. I mean, last uh, last game, he's really hitting hard, especially um, coming off those screens on the high posts, which I'm not a huge fan of the Blazers offense. I think that it gets too repetitive, bringing that high screen and roll, but when it's hitting, it's hitting, especially when Damon and CJ are hitting three, which they were. So moving to defensively, Derek Jones Jr., he's a lockdown defender. I know he got into uh, some foul trouble, and so I know that he didn't guard Curry the entire time, but he did a great job. I think he had five or six steals in this game, and that's something I think they missed a lot of last year. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. just coming in, being able to take on the best defender. Robert Covington as well, being able to take on the best defender that the other team has. And just having that defensive presence, I know being very frustrated watching the bubble games last year and how they would just, the defense would be kind of like a revolving door. But so for me, I know everyone likes to watch stats and analytics. That's a big thing now. But for me, the real test for me is the eye test. So I'm going to give out my eye test award for my first ever video. And that's going to go to Damian Lillard. It seemed like every time he got the ball, he would do something with it, whether it was his eight assists or his 34 points. He always seems to put the ball in the right spot. I don't think he had more than three turnovers today. I haven't had a chance to look at the box score officially. But also, congratulations to Mr. Damian Lillard for passing 15,000 career points. Um, I've been a Blazers fan. I don't know how high that is in the all-time list, but I think he's one of the greatest scorers in by far one of the greatest scorers uh, up there with James Harden and Steph Curry in the last 10 years with James Harden, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant, or LeBron James, obviously. But he's a baller. I don't. I think he'd get a lot more media attention if he wasn't up here in, in the Pacific Northwest. But all right, moving down to some other talking points. Normally, I would right off the bat talk about some of uh, Terry Stott's uh, rotations. I disagree with a lot of them. Again, I'm 19. I'm not a biggest, I'm not a, not the biggest in the statistics, but I think that some of the, I think the bench unit with Carmelo and Ennis Cantor, both of them are great scorers, but they're not the greatest defensively. And I think that if you try to move Carmelo into the starting unit a little bit more when they need that shot or Ennis when they need bring Ennis in when they need to give Nurk a rest. I think they're great players, but I don't know how well they gel together because of the defensive liabilities. Um, sometimes the offense gets a little stagnant. Um, tonight was great. They had a great ball movement, 
and especially in the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth before they brought in the uh, bench unit, they had a one play in particular that I can remember where they did the high high screen roll, pass to the right, uh, well, if you're watching, it'd be the far side, the far side, uh, far side wing, back to the top, back to CJ, back to... I think it was Robert Covington and then back to Dame in the corner for the three great ball movement but I know that sometimes the offense can go into stagnation I know that at the beginning of the second quarter when they put the bench unit in especially with Carmelo in there they like to he likes to slow the ball down on the post and go one-on-one -on -one, which is great when you need a basket but it's not the best for when you're trying to be up tempo in my opinion um and then the only other con that I could think of for this this game was not having Gary Trent Jr. He brings the gr and Rodney Hood's cramping uh, leg, leg injury, obviously. So Rodney Hood, I think, is a great scorer off the bench, and he's doing very well on defense, in my opinion, for the last couple last couple weeks. Gary Trent Jr. I love Gary Trent Jr. He plays hard, and he's a great defensive guard. I think when you need to play. Derek Jones Jr. and uh, or Robert Covington on the bigger players, like uh, small forward, power forward. Gary Trent Jr. is able to guard, uh, especially Paul George. I think he likes that matchup a lot. Obviously, in the last game, they had some issues with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. All right, so now the fun part, pros for this game. Harry Giles got minutes. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. I've been calling him Harry Giles. Uh, for the last, I don't for as long as they've had him, um, I didn't really follow him his career in Sacramento, but I'm happy he's a Blazer. He got minutes and he played very well. I have to congratulate uh, Coach Stotts on the on his defensive rotation, especially when he noticed that uh, Eric Pascal was having troubles guarding. Uh, I mean, he was giving Ennis Cantor some problems uh, with the mid range pull up. Ennis isn't exactly the fastest big. He's great at battling for rebounds and scoring under the basket, but he's not the greatest defender. So when Stotts recognized that and put Giles in, Giles in, I had to put, I have to put great congratulations on to Terry Stotts. Also, potentially an all-star backcourt. Um, tonight really showed that both of our guards have the potential to be all-star. And especially when you take uh, Russell Westbrook and put him in the West, I don't know how they're going to do the East-West all-star game this year or if they're going to have an all-star game this year compared to the NFL's Pro Bowl. It's This is looking like one of the better backcourts in the league. I think that uh, CJ, especially with how consistent he's been, he's one of two players in the last ever to score have 25 threes in the first five games the other being Steph Curry who's one of the greatest if not the greatest three-point shooter of all time another thing is defensive energy the defensive energy on this team has been great as well as the ball movement if they can keep the high te high tempo and not do not resort to the iso heavy Dame ver Dame and CJ going one-on-one -on -one, Carmelo going one-on-one -on -one, if they get everyone involved, I think that Robert Covington and uh, Derek Jones Jr.'s shots will start falling. And finally, last thing I got to say is huge congratulations to Mr. Carmelo Anthony for becoming 14th in the all-time scoring list, passing Tim Duncan and being right on the heel heels of Dominique Wilkins, I believe. So congratulations to Carmelo Anthony. Um... That's all I got on my little notes I wrote during the game. So congratulations, Portland Trailblazers. Let's keep it rolling.